Hello, everybody. My name is George Penyak, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Janet Penyak. Hi, everyone. Senior travel consultant, owner of Penyak Travel. And uh, so we're going to do a podcast here. We're going to call this thing the Know Before You Go Travel Show. Try to drop some travel knowledge on everybody. Uh, maybe have a little fun. Uh, drink some wine. Hang out. You know, kind of do what we usually do here at the office when it's late in the day. Um, so yeah, we had a we had an interesting week. It's Sunday for us right now, so we did a lot of stuff with the website today. We, you know, did some stuff on Facebook. You know, trying to ramp up social media. Yeah, sorry for blowing up the Facebook news feed today. We didn't mean to do that. That was definitely by accident. But yeah. you know, we're promoting and and all that good jazz. But anyway, so we're going to do this podcast here. We're going to call the No Before You Go Travel Show. Um, you know, Janet comes across so many different things every single week, really, and there's probably tons of good stuff to talk about. We just want to give you guys some good content. Blah, 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 blah. This Sunday. Content. Um, maybe have a little fun on the show, talk about destinations we've been to, and hopefully bring you guys some value where you guys are thinking about doing some trips and maybe we can help you out via our podcast. So... You know, we, this past week, booked a trip for ourselves that I definitely want to kind of kick the show off with, so I'll go ahead and let you start. Where are we going? We are going to the beautiful island of St. Lucia Mm. in the Southern Caribbean. And that's super, uh, that's super Southern Caribbean. I think it's one of the most, how far, like, is it the most Southern? It's not the most Southern, but it's... It's close? Yeah, it's down there. Um... We actually honeymooned there six years ago and haven't been back since. And so I'm super excited to get down there and just see it again and see how the resorts have changed and everything since last time we went. So very, very excited. Yeah. And that was actually like, I remember when we went almost six years ago, we got married in September. Well, we were married in September 2012. That was like our first exposure to an all-inclusive resort. And I think that Yes. That trip, what I mean, I really feel like that's what made you fall in love with travel. That's what we're doing. That's why it we're, is. It yeah. is. I was working for um, a logistics company at the time. Came back from that the honeymoon fun. and walked into that office and just literally as soon as I walked in, I said, I can't do this anymore. And knew that I had a passion for travel and wanted to get into travel um, and that's kind of where it all began. And I knew that this was going to be my career path. Excellent. We'll leave the, we'll leave the logistics company unnamed. Yes. God, bl- <laughs> God bless them as we say here in the South, but yeah, we're super excited. So from what I remember from St. Lucia and there might be some listeners out there that have never done all inclusive is, um, you know, we were really impressed with the Island. I think, um, you know, it's, it's got the, uh, reputation as being the, Hawaii of the Caribbean. Yes. It's extremely mountainous, right? Yes, it's a volcanic island, just like Hawaii. Um, Beautiful, lush greenery. I mean, it's just simply beautiful. So we are going to do this time, which we did not do last time, um, a helicopter transfer from the airport um, to, from the main airport to the smaller airport on the island. Then um, that will only be 15 minutes away from our resort. So instead of, instead of how far, I mean, usually when you drive it, how far is it? It's an hour and a half to the resort that we're going to, which is the Sandals region, Sila Talk. Um, And so, yeah, we're going to save you know, an hour and 15 minutes and, um, super excited to be able to fly over the island in a helicopter and see it from that perspective. And, um, we'll get some really good footage to share with you guys, but I'm very, very excited about that. Yeah. I hope most people know that that's an option. I, I, I wonder, like, I know you tell all of your clients, but I hope like people that go to the island will see that or like when they book that they can, no, that's an option. I don't know how you would know that if you've never been, unless you're right. working with like a travel agent or something or someone that's done it before. But it sounds awesome. Um, well, yeah, that, well, it's going to cost you, you know, roughly anywhere from one hundred and seventy-five dollars to two hundred and thirty-five dollars per person, and you know, it might sound like a lot up front, but it's just an experience, you know, that will make your trip that much more memorable and special. And um, I think it's well worth it, especially if you get car sick easily because we've done that ride from the airport oh, yeah. um, through the mountains and it it's pretty windy um and so it's money well spent especially if you don't like being in a car for very long and get car sick easily 
And and they drive a little wild in the islands. They drive crazy. We I personally have driven. Now this is a U.S. Virgin Island, but St. Thomas. Remember that? I mm-hmm. literally got pulled over for going the wrong way. I turned like left on a left like you normally would, but that's it's the opposite, right. and so it kind of. But people were flying around so fast that I had to make it. Killed us. Yeah, I know, but I had to make a decision to like literally screw it. I gotta just make a left here, and your natural instincts kick in. And they just drive fast. It's different, and so um, yeah, I would not recommend renting a car in any Caribbean island. Yeah, you can. I mean, most of them. Well, not most of them actually, but like you know, I know we've been to the Bahamas, and they have cabs and stuff like that you can take a cab and get around pretty easy oh, yeah. i think On jamaica is the them. same yeah, yeah. You, i mean you can have a driver so it, it's definitely it's easy to get that yeah and typically the resorts that we stay at i mean often we go to say oh we got a cat here in the studio hang on a second folks our cat okay ringo there get him down yep you're gonna hold him he he's, just wanted to say hi he's gonna knock your wine over <laughs> um yeah so before we were interrupted by our cat, um, uh, this is a home studio here. <laughs> um, you know, we usually stay at uh, Sandals often when we go to the Caribbean just for, you know, when we like to do leisure. Um, I because- love them because they're adults only and couples only. And um, no one expects a tip except for the butlers. And it just all of those combined make a huge difference in your overall experience. Yeah, I remember... Um, I remember we did that split stay. I think it was for one of our friends' weddings. You, yes. you, you, you put together the wedding at a Sandals property, which is awesome. Uh, we'll have to save that for another episode, Destination Weddings. But I'll never forget that when we went to the other resort, it was one of their competitors. Um, very nice property, but it was all-inclusive. But they it wasn't really all-inclusive of tipping. You still had to tip and, you know we've that was kind of our first exposure to something like that where you're at an all inclusive resort but yet the bartender almost expects a cash tip for every drink and we've had we have always gone to sandals where you kind of put your wallet away and don't worry about it and we got skipped over remember that yeah we sat at the bar um waiting for a drink on our last night by that time we were out of cash and the bartender skipped over us like five times because there were other people that had dollar bills out, which I totally get it. Um, yeah. But, you know, just makes for a different experience. But did we have an amazing time? Absolutely. The resort was beautiful. Yeah. Food was great. Service was great. That's just the only thing that I didn't like. And so that's a huge plus for me. Um, and that's why we really like to stay at Sandals because we don't have to worry about that. So. Yeah, I think... It was definitely a difference maker, but it was kind of like one of those small details that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on. But then when you actually experience it, you're like, wait, wait a second. I don't quite like this as much as not having to worry about something like that. Um, Right. So that was an interesting experience. That was in Jamaica. Um, But pivoting back to St. Lucia here, um, I am super excited to get back and tour that property. Last time we stayed, we did have a butler. We stayed in the Romeo and Juliet suite. I know they have all yes, these various now, names. Right? Now it's called the Sunset Bluff Ocean View One Bedroom Butler Suite with Balcony Tranquility Soaking Tub. Um, oh, damn, mic drop. Wow. Yes. <laughs> drop some knowledge. <laughs> they on have me. completely redone um, the majority of the rooms at that resort. And when we actually stayed in the butler suite there, um, we did not have a patio soaking tub on the balcony. Um, but that's a really nice new feature that they're kind of doing across the brand at most of their properties. Um, so it's a big tub for two and, um, it, yeah, they're great. So tub for two sounds real nice. That's on the balcony on the balcony. Hope they clean them well. I'm sure they do. I know they do. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, yeah, so that'll be fun. You know, um, And the great thing, too, about this particular Sandals Resort um, is there's two others in the area, and they have stay at one, play at three. So no matter which one you're staying at, there's a complimentary shuttle that goes between all of them that runs every hour, Um, just not late at night, but I think it's like 9 a.m. to midnight. And um, so you can hop between all of them, enjoy all the restaurants, entertainment, um, beach, and water sports at all of them. So it's really nice. You can get a change of scenery, you know, a day or two um, out of your stay. 
You know, that's one thing I regret that we didn't do. I mean, this was like six years ago before you were even in the business. Um, we got in the business about four and a half years ago or so. But five. Five years ago. <laughs> I stand corrected. Um, you know, and that, that's something that I think we should have taken advantage of. I know you always recommend it when you send people to St. Lucia because I think those other properties are really, really nice. Now, the talk, though, just like kind of like, yeah, I remember the way the layout was, and I really enjoyed the layout of that property. It's not a big, so here, and here's another thing. It's not a big beach property, right? I don't, no. I don't remember like there being a nice beach. No, it's not a big beach property. They do have a beautiful beach there. Um, and some may look at this as a downside, um, but you know, like I said, it's beautiful beach, water's crystal clear, beautiful, but the resort sits on a cove because it's on like a bluff area. And um, so the water a lot of times can be quite rough. And so pretty much every day we were there, it was either yellow flagged or red flagged. So what's the um, flags? What are those flags? Red flags mean, mean, means that, that you you can't go in the water. You if can't you see, swim. if you physically see like a red flag on the beach, yes. like the lifeguard does that. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, and then, um, we got in it when it was yellow flagged one day and it's just, you know, we're both really good swimmers, but we got knocked down by the big waves. And, um, for us though, that's not a huge deal cause we're not beach people. Yeah. Um, I don't like to get all the wet sand on me and feel all sticky. That's just not my thing. We like to sit around the pool and the swim up bar and then maybe have a view of the ocean from there. Yeah. And this resort has two great swim up pool bars, um, that both offer really nice views of the ocean. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what, where we like to hang out. So, yeah. Like one thing I loved about, and that was like the first exposure we ever had to like an all inclusive swim up bar. Like we had cruised before, and by the way, we love cruising. But like, it was so nice to just in your bathing suit swim up to a swim up bar, which you don't really you can't get this experience in the states because yeah. there, a there's not many all inclusives. If really, I mean, if there are, they're outrageously priced. But you know, b it's like you, you swim up, you don't you don't have your wallet with you, and there's you know usually the island people are phenomenal. They're fun. The bartenders always having fun, pouring drinks, and you order whatever you want. And, and if thought, you don't like what you order, get something else. Get something else. Yeah, I mean, they've got everything from shots of tequila if you want to get crazy, and we don't usually don't get crazy. But, you know, they make, you know, in-house drinks. They have the Bob Marley. They have all these drinks that they're known for. But if you want a glass of wine, some beer. Um, our uh, favorite, one of our favorites is Dirty Banana. I highly recommend a George dirty always banana. George orders it extra dirty when e- we're there. <laughs> extra dirty. So the dirty banana is, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, but it's it's rum. It's a dark rum ice. They actually make, it's a fresh banana they put in there. Um, then they put, I think, Bailey's on top and then Kahlua. It's like, I can't remember. It's like some sweet no, that's drink. that's a different one. That's a different one? I but don't know. But it's got banana and then some sort of cream and then obviously rum. It's really delicious. Would highly recommend it. And if you want it extra dirty. Um, they'll put then, dark rum on it. Yeah, they just, just keep pouring yeah. the dark rum. And, <laughs> and it you can just also gets darker get it with chocolate syrup in there too. It's delicious. Yeah. It is really good. That's making me, that's yeah. making me want to go back. So I'm, I'm super excited. Another thing I like to do. And um, I've been getting into this lately, and you can probably comment better than I can because you see me doing this. And I think I'm a pretty good, you know, I consider myself a pretty good athlete. But water volleyball. Yes. You've seen me make some killer moves out there. Oh, yeah. Because they have the event staff, and they set all that up, and it's like... You know, they have the, the entertainment. What's the entertainment guy's name? What's their role? What's their, they're called playmakers. the playmakers. Yes. They have, and playmaker. they have them all around the pools and um, they usually set up a um, water volleyball game. Um, usually there's one in the morning and then one in the late afternoon. And a lot of times um, in the late afternoon ones, the staff will get involved. I mean, you'll see some butlers hop in the pool and play against um, some of the staff versus guests. Yeah. Some yeah. of the guests. And it's really, really fun. So, so and George thinks he's like the greatest thing ever at it. So the I know every time we go to a sandals, I always play because uh, it's fun. It's fun to sit around for a while. And they usually do it like mid afternoon, and you just kind of hang out. So you're hanging out, drinking by the pool, enjoying the views, doing what you do on vacation. One in the lounge. morning, and, one in the late afternoon. Oh, that's right, that's right. I usually do the late afternoon one. I don't, too early for me to do all the. <laughs> but typically, the resorts have two different pools. So if you want like a chill pool, 
yeah. that doesn't have like 